Hello? <clears throat> Hello? Hello? <laughs> if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA, I make videos for NFL, all of these videos get posted on this amazing subreddit called DFS Sports with one S, so I post updates with all the news that comes out, people talk strategy here, um, you can ask me questions, I'll always respond to you, if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can do so through Reddit Messenger, or you can get a hold of me on Twitter at ToryLangley1992. But just make sure, if you follow me, I, I troll a lot, I tilt a lot. So if you're not into that stuff, just do not follow me or unfollow me. Um, but yeah, um, I just post a lot of bullshit. So uh, yeah, also, I'm going to blow you guys' mind. Did you guys know the Krusty Krab is actually shaped like a crab trap? And that is why Mr. Krabs doesn't leave the, the Krusty Krab. Because he's stuck! He's in a crab trap! I just gained a hundred and million IQ points by realizing this. I've been fooled my whole life. If you guys knew this and I didn't know this this whole time, I'm going to feel dumb. Like, if all you guys knew this in your childhood and I've just been just blatantly um, not knowing this this whole time, shame on me. So let me know. let me know if you guys knew this or not, but... I can't live life anymore after this. They did Mr. Krabs dirty. And I don't know how to feel about it. I don't. Mr. Plankton should get in there and just burn it down. Underwater, just burn it down so Mr. Krabs can get out of the crab trap. Because I feel bad, man. No one wants to live in a crab trap. No one, and I mean no one, runs worse than Mr. Krabs. All right, so I had a, I had a profitable day today, not in DFS, but um, um, but hit hit, hit a six leg parlay. I took I took Levert PRA, Garland PRA, Mobley PRA, Jovell PRA, Trey Murphy PRA, CD McCollum PRA, um. So, if you guys want more of this stuff, um, or if you want to join my Discord, my, di my Discord will be linked down below in the comments. I can start doing this stuff in the Discord. Um, if you're interested in that, definitely let me know. I'll start doing it, um, if that's something you are interested in. But, let's go over my lineup from today. And, all I know is pain. Absolutely no one runs worse. So, the core that I have for today was Darius Garland, Ty Jerome, Karis LeVert. All three absolutely broke the slate. And then John Morant. Uh, John Morant is a core play. In a phenomenal matchup up against the Lakers. And I told everyone. I don't think Jokic plays. I was saying it in Discord. All freaking day long. I don't think Jokic plays. I want you guys to be playing at least one or two of. Jamal Murray, MPJ, and Aaron Gordon. Pref preferably two of the three. That ended up working out. Some guys in the Discord had some big nights because of it. Um, they all went under-owned. That being Gordon, MPJ, Jamal Murray. All three of them absolutely smashed in a massive blowout. Which was expected. I knew this game could definitely blow out. Um, and then I went to Walker Kessler, who just... Unbelievable, man. Absolutely unbelievable. I fade this guy. He breaks the slate. I finally buy in. In, in a phenomenal spot. And he just does terrible unbelievable i bubbled i literally bubbled basically stone bubble so yeah um unfortunate stuff and then brandon clark dude misses the free throw at the end just unbelievable on and then the lakers they're hacking the last three minutes so john rank can't even do anything all offensively like what am i watching but this just proves no one runs worse. It's just whatever. I'm still still happy profiting on the day. Um, but let's get into this one, two, three, four, five, six game slate for tomorrow. I think it's a really good slate, in my opinion. We have some clear value plays. 
not a ton of spend ups, but I think it's a mid mid range build type of day, but with some really good value plays that, um, depending on starting lineups, some really good value plays that I am so so excited to play. Um, so let's go over the slate. Orlando at Washington. Good matchup here for Orlando, but nothing really stands out to me. Like I think Ben Chero, Franz, they're appropriately priced. I think one of Car Juniors appropriately priced. He's just not playing big minutes right now. He'll probably like cap out at 30 minutes. So 6.3k. He's okay. Probably my favorite player in Orlando. This guy just causes people incredible amounts of pain. When you fade him, he breaks the slate. When you play him, he busts. I don't know how a point guard has this low of a floor. It makes absolutely no sense to me, but that's what you get with Markel Fultz. Has a ceiling, has a low floor. I would just rather not take the headache because I'm a single entry player. Same with Cole Anthony. And then the bench is just not playing enough. Let's move on to Washington. So not the best matchup here. Orlando is actually solid defensively, if I recall correctly. So very, very tough against bigs too, I think. Um, so Porzingis, I don't really have any interest in him. I think he's overpriced with Bradley Beal back. Same with Kyle Kuzma. Bradley Beal 7.4K, I think, is on a limit. Um, if we get news, he's not going to be on the limit and goes back to, like, 35 minutes. I would have some interest, but, um, yeah, hard hard to get to anyone on Washington. I honestly think my favorite play is the guards, like Monte Morris at 4.9K. I think this feels very, very safe. Um, not going to continue to average over 30 fantasy points a game. Usually he'll probably get you anywhere from 25 to 30, but feels like a safe value. Not someone I'm, like, I'm okay with the, if I land on him as the last man in, but definitely not going to go out of my way to play him. Can't get to Gafford with Beal back. And then, um, uh, Don Wright's just okay. Probably plays 18 to 20 minutes. Okay value. But I think there are much better point guard values that we'll talk about in the next game after Milwaukee. So, Big news here is Giannis Antetokounmpo is questionable. Not the best matchup here. If Giannis is in, it's just Giannis at the top for me. Even then, I don't love the spot for him. Just more of a GPP only play. Drew, Portis would both be overpriced. Brooke Lopez, once again, don't like the spot, so I'll gladly pass there. Grayson, Connaughton would be out of play for me. Ingles would be out of play, so not much if Giannis is in. If Giannis is out, though, that's when we consider Drew Portis. I still think they're priced appropriately with Giannis out. So they're not must plays, but they would definitely be in play. I think the matchup just really takes me off them, but they would definitely be in play. Brolo would be in play, but once again, not in love with it. Grayson um, definitely has a ceiling. Will probably play more. Has to do more offensively with no Giannis. Um, he would be an okay value. Same with Joe Ingles at 3.9K. Probably plays 25-ish minutes. Not going to do this again. This was definitely an outlier game, but he can contribute in a lot of different ways. Um, I think he'd be an okay value if Giannis is out. But once again, I think there is definitely going to be some better value on this slate. So we're going to have Ricky Rubio back, I believe. Donovan Mitchell, I don't expect to play. So we'll go over assuming he is out. If that's the case in a tough spot, I think Garland's still priced appropriately, sad to say, given the matchup. If it was, if it was a different matchup, I would like him quite a bit still. The good thing with Garland is he's basically just going to play the whole game. He's probably going to get you close to a double, double-double. Not a good rebounder, so he's probably not going to get you a bunch of rebounds, but um, we'll get you close to a double-double. Probably plays close to 40 minutes. I, I still think he would be in play at that price tag. The bigs, they're just there for me. I don't like the spot up against Brolo. I think they're fine, um, fine mid-range plays. Definitely good. I don't know if they're cash game plays either. I, I would be okay with them in cash, but um, I think they're okay. They're just there for me, and I would really like Levert once again. I've been playing Levert every time that Donovan Mitchell is out, and he's smashed every single time, and I'm going to keep riding that wave. So, really good point prevented guy. He should be a 6.5K player with no um, Donovan Mitchell. So, I really like Levert. I don't care about the matchup. Assuming Mitchell's out, I'm going to go right back. I think he looks awesome. Um, with Rubio back, um, probably can't get the Chetty. I would assume he goes back to playing only like 10 or so minutes a game. Kevin Love did play 20 minutes tonight. Um, if Mitchell's out, I definitely think you can consider it for large field GPPs. Really good point for a guy. Um, I think it would be an okay GPP option. Let's move on to Charlotte. So a lot to like here with Charlotte. We have Lamella Ball out. 
or doubtful, I should say. So, Terry Rozier going to lead the way offensively in a pace-up spot. Going to play huge minutes. Going to have the ball in his hands a lot more. I think he looks really good at 7.6K. Has that shooting guard eligibility. So, really like Terry Rozier. I think the bigs are just okay at these prices. I definitely do do prefer P.J. Washington to Plumley. We do have Hayward back. I, I believe he'll be on a limit, so can't go there. <clears throat> that probably takes McDaniels out of play for me unless he starts. I still think he'll get solid run, but um, I don't know what they're going to do with the starting lineup. So they can start Rogier at the point and keep McDaniels in the starting lineup. Or they can start Dennis Smith Jr. at the point um, and go DSJ, Terry Rogier, Gordon Hayward, uh, P.J. Washington, Mason Plumley. If Dennis Smith Jr. starts... At $4,000, he is going to be one of the best value plays on the slate. Really good point, well, not a really good, but a good point per minute guy. A guy that's an okay facilitator, going to have the ball in his hands a lot. Um, He won me a GPP earlier this year. I believe it was this game. Um, It was either this game or this game, or the next game. I'm not entirely sure. Um, No, it was when he was cheaper, I feel like. Might have been the Atlanta game. I'm not sure. But if he starts at the point, he just looks awesome. Would love Dennis Smith Jr. if he starts at the point. Even if he comes off the bench, I still like him quite a bit. Um, I think he plays over 25 minutes here. So I like Dennis Smith Jr. regardless. And if he starts, he's going to look awesome for value. And if McDaniel starts, you can go to him. That's completely fine. But let's move on to Atlanta. So... Really good matchup here. I think Trey Murray are solid plays at their respective prices. I think Collins is okay at 5.6k. He's just playing huge minutes. Um, really good spot against Charlotte as well. I don't hate Collins at 5.6k. They said they were going to bump up Capella's minutes. He played less. What are we doing? So it's back to back. Maybe he doesn't play. I don't know. But I'm, I'm off Capella. I'm off of Kongwu. Bog, no thank you. Hunter, no thank you. So... Probably just Collins and Murray and Trey for me up at the top. And then more important news here. Kevin Porter Jr. doubtful. Jabari Smith Jr. doubtful. And they're running th- they're running their offense through uh, Alperin Sengen right now. Um, he's playing huge minutes. I don't care that he's 8.1K. I still like Sengen quite a bit at this price tag. He's still too cheap if he's going to play close to 40 minutes and with how they're running their offense with no Kevin Porter Jr. This is if Kevin Porter Jr. is out. So... I still like Sengen quite a bit for GPPs. I think it's a mistake if you're going to avoid him at this price tag. I do. I really, really do. So, assuming Kevin Porter Jr. is out, I still like Sengen quite a bit, especially if Rudy Gobert is out. I think Jalen Green is a fine GPP play. They're just playing huge minutes with no Kevin Porter Jr. Um, Just know the floor is low if he's not hitting his shots. And then the value. So, here's the thing. Starting line, going to be Jalen Green, Alperen Sengen, KJ Martin, Eric Gordon. Who else do they throw on the starting line? Well, they're going to throw one of two guys in who are both good point per minute guys. Jason Tate or Terry Eason. If Terry Eason starts at 3.7K, I'm going to absolutely love this guy for value. Really good point per minute guy. Guy that can stuff the stat sheet. Amazing rebounder. Um, if he starts, I love him. Um, if they start Jason Tate, I like Tate quite a bit for value. But I think Terry Eason would be play in play. Whoever comes off the bench, I think, would still be in play. And like I said, Katie Martin's going to move in the starting lineup, probably play over 30 minutes. I think he's solid for value. I think Eric Gordon at 4.5K has to do a lot more offensively. I don't hate him for value. So I really like Houston tomorrow. Um, I really do. Really good spot here for Minnesota. Rudy Gobert is questionable. Ant's questionable, but I fully expect him to play. So, Ant, going to play close to 40 minutes. Phenomenal spot here. I do like him as a spend-up. Rudy Gobert, if he plays, is okay. But I'll play him, and he gets injured five minutes in. D'Lo, minutes kind of down of late. Probably plays, you know, 30, 35 minutes. Okay option at 6.7K. Kyle Anderson is just the best player in the world. I will continue to fade. Um, but I would only consider him if Gobert is out. Nas Reed, if Gobert is in, no thank you. McDaniels, no thank you. And then um, if Gobert is in, you can't get to Prince. So now if Gobert is out, bigger boost to Ant. Still like him. D'Lo would like Kyle Anderson would be firmly in play, but 
he'll probably be over owned and keep going for 50. So I'll, I'll gladly fade. Uh, McDaniels would be in play. I'm going to go right back to Nas Reed. I still think he would look phenomenal. If people want to fade because he's been in foul trouble, be my guest. I will not be fading if Rudy Gobert is out. And then Torian Prince would just be a fine value. Probably plays 25 to 30 minutes. Feels super safe to me. Let's move over to the next game, the Pacers. There's not much here for me. Like, it's not a good spot for Miles Turner, plus blow at risk. Like, Miles Turner rotation, if the game gets out of hand, he will not play many minutes at all. Because his rotation is very sporadic. So, if the game gets out of hand early, he will just stay his ass on the bench. So, very inherent risk with Miles Turner. And I don't like the matchup, so... Not in love with Turner, not not in love with Heald, not in love with McConnell, not in love with Matherin. I think Nemhard's still a solid play at 5.4k, but um, really nothing on the Pacers that stand out to me. So on the Phoenix side of things, we have Chris Paul questionable. We'll go over both ways. Cam Johnson out. So if Chris Paul is in, I assume he'll be on a limit. Um, I think Aiton's in a good spot, would have interest in him. CP3, like I said, he'll be on a limit. Bridges, I think, would be priced appropriately. And then the value would kind of just be out of play for me. Like, Sarge, Craig, they would definitely still be in play, but definitely don't love it. Let's go now if Chris Paul's out. So, Aiton, Bridges get a boost. I think Bridges would be very, very safe. Just basically playing the whole game. Um, so, here's the thing. Dwayne Washington was ahead of saving lead last game, but Dwayne Washington played like shit. Pissed off Monty Williams, so Monty Williams benched him for Saban Lee. They signed Saban Lee to another 10-day 10, 10 contract, so I do think Saban Lee will be ahead of Dwayne Washington this game. So if Chris Paul's out, I do like Saban Lee for value. It's all going to be an ownership thing for me. If Saban Lee's going to be giga chalk, I don't like him. I think he's a bad play. But if we'll be low-owned, I'll definitely have some interest. And then if they start Damian Lee at the point again, I think he's a pretty good value at 4.8K. Definitely an outlier game. I think he'll be more productive um, with him playing this many minutes at the point. Um, and then Craig, Sarge, they're in play, especially with Cam Johnson out. Um, I think they would be okay to solid values. Um, Sarge got into massive foul trouble last game, barely played. so um, And they went to uh, Saban Lee because he was nuking the slate. So... On to Philly. So, James Harden is questionable. It doesn't really change much for me. Like, just a huge usage bump to Joel Embiid. I think Joel Embiid looks like the best spend up on the slate tomorrow. I expect him to be extremely popular with all the value that we have. So, I do love Embiid in this spot. Harden, if he plays, I think looks good. And then I'm not going to play anyone else. But, if Harden's out, that definitely does change some things. Embiid's going to look amazing. Harris, Maxi would get a boost. They would be a more in play. Melton would get a boost. I would have some interest in him for value. Um, Shake Milton probably plays a little bit more. Um, so keep an eye on the hard news. Keep an eye on the starting lineup. Tyrus Maxey's been coming off the bench. I believe maybe they throw him into the starting lineup. Um, maybe they throw, I don't know. I don't know what they would do with the starting lineup. So we'll see. Sacramento, not much here in a tough spot. Simonis, don't love playing centers against Embiid, but um, don't love it. I think Fox is priced appropriate. Barnes, Herter, man, Keegan Murray, man. So, not much on Sacramento. I think uh, just more so the Philly side for me. So, I hope this video helped you guys out, and I hope you guys had a good night tonight. And uh, go Eagles!